Today I'd like to do a slightly different type of video here on my channel than the norm, and it's going to feature cleaning gravestones at cemeteries like you see in the background over here. It's been a little side project that I've been working on now for the past several months, so I wanted to tell you a little bit more about what I've been working on, and of course I had to make a kit for it. For the past several years, we take the kids out as part of a family tradition to local cemeteries where our family members who are veterans are resting at. So there's various cemetery sites throughout the area. Um, for example, my grandparents served in the military, my wife's grandparents also served in the military, and we also have some extended family members. And we just wanted to establish that kind of family tradition to pay tribute to our family members that served in the military. And so we do that every Memorial Day to a site similar to this one. And so we would just basically go and visit the cemetery site, we would clean up the the gravestone, sweep off any kind of leaves or stuff that's on there, maybe trim back the grass, pull up weeds, and make sure it's just nice and tidy and also to put a flag there on that site. Oftentimes, in the process of visiting our own family's grave sites, we'll also clean up some other grave sites for veterans that are nearby that look like they've been unkept and not visited for a while. So we'll just do a clean of that you know, to take up all the leaves, make sure the flag's good and everything like that. This past year, we were visiting this particular cemetery, and my mother happened to notice a gravestone that just kind of struck her for some reason. It was uh, completely black and mildewed over, a lot of moss growing on it. You couldn't read the name on it, but she could tell on the very top of it, it had a little lamb on there. And for some reason, it struck her, and she just thought, oh, that's a cute little lamb over there. I wonder who this person is. So I decided to do a little cleanup of this particular type of gray site. So I cleaned up the lamb, I uh, wiped off all the moss, and did some little light brushing of it just kind of got it to a better state where we could actually read the name of it and what came to we came to find out is that these lambs represent oftentimes the majority of the times are children so they could be anywhere from a few days old a couple months old a couple years old but uh, for the most part they're kids under the years of 10 and what would happen is that we just noticed that throughout the cemetery there's all these hundred year old uh, grave sites of kids that have been long forgotten and they're completely blackened over and mossed over and it kind of just struck me and I felt bad for it as a father myself as a family man and I have kids that are the age of some of these sites that I saw back here I wanted to do something to try to help those ones and make them so they're not forgotten as well in the same light that you do with the military. For the past several months now, it's been my goal to clean all of the lamb gravestones that are here at this particular cemetery because they're just kids that have been forgotten for over a hundred years. And I thought it'd be a service to the parents of those kids to make sure that their gravesite is not forgotten, is clean. And the cool thing about these little lamb gravestones is that oftentimes they're a white marble or a limestone. And when you clean them up, they become bright white and they really stick out in the cemetery as a nice clean white uh, grave site. And so I've been going throughout this particular cemetery and finding all the little lambs, cleaning them. And so what I want to do for this video is talk a little bit about my strategy for cleaning them. And of course I had to make a kit because that's what I like doing. So I'd talk about the items that are included in the kit. Most of you know that I really enjoy making kits, and so I had to make a kit for cleaning grave sites at cemeteries. So let's talk over all the items that are included in this cleaning caddy, in addition to some other items to help clean a grave site. The most important item that you're going to need is lots and lots of water, probably around 5 to 10 gallons per gravestone. I usually transport the water using 5 gallon buckets that I get from Home Depot or Lowe's. I like to replace the bucket handles using these snappy grip ergonomic replacement bucket handles. It makes it easier for lugging around the water throughout the cemetery. The next important item that you're going to have to purchase is a one gallon jug of D2 biological solution. It's a little pricey at $40 to $50, but outside of good old fashioned elbow grease, this is going to be your primary item. D2 biological solution is a biodegradable, easy to use liquid that removes stains from mold, algae, mildew, lichens, and air pollutants. It's effective on marble, granite, limestone, and other architectural surfaces, including monuments, sculpture, and headstones. You only really need a contact time of around 15 minutes, followed by scrubbing with a soft nylon or natural bristle brush to loosen most biological and air pollutant stainings. D2 contains no acids, salts, or bleach, all which would harm a gravestone. It has a pH of 9.5. It will not etch metals or glass. It's safe to use around plants. It's not a hazardous material and requires special handling or protection. You just use it as full strength so you're not mixing in water or anything like that. It has a shelf life of five years. This is what's used at Arlington National Cemetery and at the White House for the various monuments that are there. So it's highly regarded and very, very good. 
If cost is a concern, there's a few alternatives that some people use, such as Orvis Paste Cleaner, which comes in a 120 ounce bottle for $40 and lasts forever. And then Kodak Photo Flow 200 Solution, which comes in a 16 ounce bottle for $20. They're both pH neutral, it's like a synthetic soap and mainly a wetting agent that decreases the water surface tension. But I think that the D2 works better. To go with that D2, you're gonna need a one gallon multi-purpose sprayer, and then I like having a cleaning caddy for carrying all of the various cleaning tools that I use. So I just go with a Rubbermaid commercial cleaning caddy. I have my gravestone cleaning caddy separated into two different sections, one for brushes and the other for scrapers. So here are the items that I have in those various sections. So I use the OXO Good Grips Heavy Duty Scrub Brushes. I have two of them. I also have two of the OXO Good Grips All Purpose Scrub Brushes. I have two sets of the OXO Good Grips Deep Clean Brush Set, which is basically a really fancy toothbrush. And then for scrapers, I have uh, several wooden paint sticks for scraping off biological buildup. You could get these at Home Depot at the paint section. And I also have several wooden craft sticks or tongue depressors. And those are used for getting inside of the smaller cracks, like where the engravings are for the letterings. I also have a Red Devil three-piece plastic knife set, which is used for scraping as well. And then I like having a dust brush just for dusting off the gravestone prior to cleaning. Let's talk about my current process for cleaning gravestones. You could also call them tombstones, grave markers, headstones. Uh, they're kind of interchangeable. So I've been trying to follow the strategy used by uh, a person called the Good Cemeterian. You've probably seen him on the news and on YouTube videos. He's a, he cleans military, uh, restores military uh, gravestones. He does an awesome job. And basically you don't want to use any kind of item that would damage the gravestone that's you're damaging uh, someone's grave marker and you could get in big trouble for that anyway. And it's also kind of disrespectful. So so uh, you don't use any bleaches, acids, pressure washers, sand blasters, metal scrub brushes, anything like that. So let's talk over what I use, which is basically a lot of water, a lot of elbow grease, and then some, a cleaning solution called D2 Biological Solution. Let's talk about the cleaning process now in more details. The first step is to inspect the gravestone to ensure that it is stable enough for cleaning. Some will have large cracks and may look fragile to mess with. If it looks like it's about to fall apart, just don't touch it. I might just spray it with a D2 biological solution and leave it at that. The D2 works without needing to scrub, although the results won't be as good. Step two, before starting, take a photo of the gravestone prior to cleaning it. One, for your own records. Two, to admire the difference once it is cleaned. And then three, to provide to the cemetery management if needed, if there's any issues in the future regarding that particular gravestone. This is more for your own protection. And I have photos of all of the gravestones that I've cleaned. Make sure to stop in and speak with the cemetery director to ask for permission to restore forgotten monuments. Use this opportunity to show them the supplies and process that you are using so they can be confident that you will do no harm. It's important to remember that these monuments are owned by either the individual or family and any damage to them would be extremely devastating, not to mention criminal. Step three, if needed, brush off all of those leaves, twigs, spider webs, etc. from the stone using that dust brush. Step four, scrape off all the large pieces of moss and other biological growth using the wooden paint sticks or soft plastic scrapers. Again, do not use metal scrapers or anything that will damage the stone. Step five is completely drench the stone with water. Cemeteries often have outdoor water faucets available throughout the grounds that you could use. If not, you'll have to bring in your own water from home using large water jugs or buckets. Next, you want to spray the entire stone down with D2 Biological Solution and let it sit for around 15 minutes. Spraying on wet surfaces will help better distribute the solution throughout the stone. Uh, try to spray from the top to the bottom of the stone to avoid streaking. I normally try to repeat these first few steps to clean three to four stones at a time that are in close proximity from each other. That way when I finish one, I can move on to the next one, which has hopefully soaked in the D2 Biological Solution for a long enough period of time. After the D2 is set for 15 minutes, scrub the entire stone with a wet, heavy-duty scrub brush, either a natural or synthetic bristles. You should see a bunch of suds form from the D2 as you do this. Rinse the brush as you go, which will help wash away a lot of the initial grind from the stone as you go. I usually do long swipes with this particular brush. Next, rinse the stone with water to clear off the majority of the initial dirt and grime. This will show you if you've missed any spots. Next, use the all-purpose scrub brush to further scrub the stone. Again, I dip these brushes in water prior to using them to help with the surface tension. I do small circular motions with these particular brushes, which have a nice, comfortable handle. I try to focus mainly on the engravings and the letterings. 
Now I like to use the deep clean brushes, again they look like heavy duty toothbrushes, to deep clean the letterings and fine details of the engravings. Again, I find that it works better to use them when they're wet and to keep them clean as you go by dipping them into the bucket of water. Now, do a final rinsing of the stone to completely wash away all of the dirt, grime, and biological buildup. At this point, I like to respray the entire stone again with D2, again trying to go from bottom to top and let it sit for several days. After a few weeks or so, I like to reinspect the stone and possibly respray it again if it looks like it still has a little bit of biological buildup on it. You have to be really patient with D2. It's not going to work like bleach that just kills everything instantly. But again, bleach is incredibly bad for gravestones, so don't use it. But again, just be patient with the D2. It will work over time. Because gravestones are made of a porous material, it takes D2 a fair amount of time to get into all those little microscopic nooks and crannies, holes and cracks, to safely remove all of the biological buildup from it. So again, you have to be very patient with it, but eventually it'll clear it all out. After a few months, the D2 will have worked completely and the stone will be very clean. The lamb gravestones that I've been cleaning, which are made of limestone or marble, oftentimes turn bright white, which is what they look like when they were brand new. At this point, I take another photo, again for the same reasons that I did in the beginning. It's really cool to see how the stone looked before and after. It's a great feeling to see a gravestone come back to life and be visible again to visitors who probably ignored it for decades because it wasn't noticeable or readable due to the buildup of dirt, grime, and moss. On a side note, I find it very relaxing to clean gravestones. I prefer to do it in the morning before any other visitors are at the cemetery. It's just me and all of the people that are buried at that cemetery. I work in a fast-paced, high-tech industry for my day job in software engineering, and cleaning gravestones has kind of become my yoga, where I could relax in silence and think about the person who is at rest at that site that I am cleaning. It's a very fulfilling and reflective process for me. And that's how I clean a gravestone. So as of right now, I've cleaned a total of 84 of these little lamb grave sites here at this particular cemetery. I probably have less than 20 remaining before all of them have been restored to a good state where all the moss has been removed and most of them are bright white and now sticking out when probably for decades and decades they were black and long forgotten. It's just kind of been a really cool feeling to do this at this particular cemetery and you feel like you're doing some good for your community. So I thought this might be a fun video for you guys to watch to learn a little bit more about the process and maybe even consider doing something like this at your local cemeteries just to make sure that grave sites are taken care of and not forgotten. So after I finished all of the lambs at this one I'll probably move back to doing the military sites uh, because there's a lot of those as well and I want to make sure that those aren't forgotten as well. There's a lot of videos here on YouTube to show how to do it. Most people like using the D2 biological solution which I've tested and it works really well. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and please feel free to leave any kind of comments below in the comment section and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.